So welcome to the assembly of the rising stars. You want to shout hallelujah? I, I love you so very much and it's been such a beautiful experience sharing the revelation of the word of God with you. We are dealing with devourers. You are already uh, programmed this week, waging war against devourers. We're still praying with Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 19 that it will not be small and we will not go down. And that's what happens in the prayer belts as you write any time between 12 midnight and 4 a.m. in the covenant time of the family. That's the prayer belt. That's the prayer house. The prayer zone of the family from 12 midnight until 4 a.m. Anytime you rise within that time fits into the corporate covenant grace of the family. You can take one hour or more and pray. But we are speaking as we speak over yourself, speak over your business, your family, your future, your destiny, your calling. You speak over the ministers. Speak over me, speak over all the ministers. Speak over your members in the 24, your members in the 8 and your legs. And speak over all others in GFCC. Speak over every sector in GFCC. We're not going down and we're not going to be small. And this week we're adding Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 16 and 17 verses 16 and 17 that by the broke, unbroken word of God all devourers are now devoured all devourers all devourers financial devourers are devoured so use the word of God that says that all those who devour you shall be devoured and which war against what makes you stagnant what reduces you in size what brings you set back what breaks your speed and makes you slow and sluggish what makes you work hard and with no corresponding results what wastes you and reduces you into ruins and the third the third levels of this prayer the third level of this prayer in Isaiah 49 verse 25 to 26 Isaiah 49 verses 25 and 26 that by the mighty hand of God who promises to deliver the captive from the mighty, that by the mighty hand of God who fights for you, because he says he will fight for you, that you are completely free from the power of devourers and their works. And all devourers of your blessings are devouring themselves. So this week is to turn it against the devourer, that whatever destroys, whatever eats you up should be should eat itself up. So this is a week to bury the bury things. Let the enemy eat his flesh and drink his blood. That's what the scripture says. That's the, what the word of God says. The one who walks against God's plan for you has lost the right for life. Has walk, lost the right to exist. Whatever is the devourer and the manifestation of the devourer. Scripture says let them eat their flesh and drink their blood. Shout hallelujah. That's it for the prayer belt. This morning we're still dealing with resisting the devourer. Part three. We're still dealing with resisting the devourer. And we are dealing with the third part. Let's look at the scripture of 1 Peter. 1 Peter. And for those who may be connecting us for the first time, who are here in church for the first time, I just want to let you know that devourers exist. The scripture talks about the devil as a devourer. The scripture talks about the devil as devourer. Devourer, devourer is what drinks you up. It's what eats you up. It's what swallows you and you go down. What swallows your finance and your finance goes down. What swallows your health and your health goes down. So the activity and the workings of devourers are revealed in the downward spiraling. The downward spiraling of your life in health your marriage going down there is a devourer and the scripture traces every activity of the devourer to one being the devil your enemy the adversary the adversary the one who is against you the one who is adverse to your blessing the one who hates your progress the one who hates your rising first peter chapter 5 and verse 8 to 10 be sober be sober be vigilant be vigilant why are you to be sober why are you to be vigilant why the your adversary 
not your mother, not your father, not your grandfather, not your boss, not your lecturer, your adversary. So if there is a boss that swears you cannot rise to the next level, it is not about that boss. The scripture talks about it in Ephesians chapter 6 that we're not fighting against flesh and blood. Our, our wrestling, our fighting, our, 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 our struggling, our competition, our racing is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts, a spiritual army, well arranged, well motivated, and the motivation of this army is hate. They hate light. They hate the glory of God. They hate purity. They hate holiness. They hate peace in marriage. So, these hosts, they are so arranged, so organized, so well programmed. If you go to Asia, you will see them. Go to America, wherever there are human beings. These hosts, they are called the adversary. They are the enemies. Enemies of joy. Enemies of life. So wherever you find life, the enemies of life, the hosts of the wicked world of darkness, the scripture says they are hosts. When the scripture refers to the word host, we are talking about army. We are talking about fighting force that is well organized. It's not a mob. It's not a mob. It's not some untrained, unintentional, tattered looking, wretched looking, and no weapon carrying stuffs. We are talking about hosts as in the sense of well organized, well armed. God himself says he's the God of hosts. And so the word host is used in that level of organization under structures of leadership. When you talk about hosts, there is hierarchy. There are, strat there are strata and strata and strata of hierarchical, hierarchical arrangements. Arrangements to make sure that things work properly. So when in church we see people disorganized in ministry, doing things anyhow, they play into the hands of the adversary. They are always arranged. You go into a family, you see that the parents do not have control over their children. The children go to bed when they want, how they want, play with everything they want, and touch everything they want, and live as they want. That means there is no arrangement, no order. That is a gift on the platter of ease to the adversary who takes advantage of no war to devour, to reduce. When you go into a marriage, you see there are no rules, there are no discipline. A man is not accountable to the woman and a woman is not accountable to the man. That is a gift. That is a gift to the adversary. The adversary takes advantage of indiscipline. The adversary takes advantage, takes advantage of lack of organization, no structure of accountability anyhow things are done anyhow that means there are no walls that means there are no security there are no defense no structure of security and the enemy the scripture says the adversary and this adversary in Ephesians chapter 6 is revealed as hosts and it's not just before you get to the host they, they are referred to as principles principalities. When we talk about principalities, we're talking about controlling overseeing princes of darkness. We are talking about rulers who are principals. We are talking about demonic guardians. Those who oversee territories. Those who oversee certain shades of darkness. So there is a principality over immorality making sure immorality corrupts marriages, corrupts ministries, corrupts people's destinies controlling forces of immorality controlling forces of lies and deception controlling these are this at the top of it you meet principality mean principal spirit controlling spirit 
princes, those who are rulers. The scripture talks about the prince of Persia that resisted the angel that brought blessing, the answer to the prayer of Daniel. That was a principality. That was a controlling territorial power. So we are dealing with hierarchy of darkness. And I just want to let you know, as insignificant as you may appear, as prayerless as you are, sitting down ignorant, you are not dealing with dogs. You say, I saw a dog in my dream. No, it's not a dog. You are dealing with principalities. And past. I saw a cat in my dream. And a cat scared me and beat me and scratched me. Shh, you're not dealing with cats. <laughs> These principalities, they need bodies because they are spirits. They need bodies for activity. And because they need bodies for activities and you are a corporal being, that is, you wear body. So you see things according to your kind. You will not see pure spirit because you are not pure spirit. So things have to assume a shape, assume a form that is relatable to your understanding and your mind as somebody who is in mortality, who is in the flesh. That's why you say, I see a dog. It's not a dog. I see a lion. It's not a lion the scripture is talking about principles principalities against powers the word powers here we are dealing with exousias we are dealing with authority those who have the command and the release from satan himself from lucifer if there is a being like that that says destroy authority to parcel out authority to break so we are dealing with exousia those who have been given permission in wickedness to waste and so because they are given permission to waste the spirits under them may, you know become the missionary the missionary of that waste and if they come into your family as witchcraft they waste you you say but i'm a child of god you're a child of god in discipline you are a child of God untrained. You are a child of God prayerless. You are a child of God worthless. You are a child of God without passion, without fire. That means you are a child of God without a surrounding, a surrounding presence, living presence of God. There is a general presence of God, which means everywhere you go to, you can encounter God. But there is the manifest presence of God, which is the function of intentional relationship. Your personal connection and relationship with God sets up the manifest presence of God in your favor. So a child of God without understanding, a child of God without fire, a child of God without passion, a child of God without the word, without consecration, without holiness, a child of God without standing right with God is a gift to this exousia, to these authorities, to these principalities and they are demons who carry the authority which is the permission to act. Permission to act is authority and in the demonic way, this exousia are the permission for the indiscipline to be destroyed. The permission for, you, for, the, for the powerless, fireless children of God to be wasted that is why you hear people speak in tongues and they are stagnant. They are speaking in tongues. They are living in sickness that is indescribable. They are speaking in tongues. They are marriage in disarray. They are speaking in tongues, but they cannot stand. They cannot resist. Why? They have been reduced into bread. Reduced into bread. You are fighting against rulers. Rulers. Controlling forces of the darkness of this age. Against spiritual hosts. We are talking about the army commanded by this level of hierarchy, the principles, the powers, the, the rulers, uh, and the, the spiritual, uh, who, who govern the spiritual hosts of the wickedness in the heavenly places. The word heavenly places makes reference to a height above your mind, a height above your imagination. They operate in ways beyond the good, the Keep your understanding because they operate in the heavenly places. The word heavenly places refers to height. Heights that is not necessarily physical, spatial height, but heights that are above in magnitude, above in experience, above the capturing ability of your mind. So that you go through stuff, but you don't know why. You can't pin it down. Why things are going down? Why your health is suddenly going down? A woman one of the ministers in the school of the holy spirit had to give a testimony she had given before about the husband and she's a, a, a member here the husband for years beginning to dwindle and to dry up dwindle and suck and dry up and no medical test could pick anything 
no medical examination could pick anything but he was dying until there was an encounter when she used the revelation in the school of the Holy Spirit about life to engage the almighty and the revelation was that your husband had been poisoned and these are the internal organs, organs of your husband and they are all black and they need redemption now deliverance came because she engaged heaven so we are dealing with things that are in the heavenly places how will you imagine that somebody will be poisoned but medicine cannot pick it up medical apparatus stuffs sites of medicine in tests a battery of tests cannot detect it why we are dealing with things in the heavenly places i don't know where i'm talking to somebody that you sit down you don't know why suddenly you hate your wife you are dealing with things in the heavenly places beyond your conceptualization and your imagination beyond your comprehension and your you just cannot understand it i don't feel myself but i can't i don't even know what it is i just don't know just, just, because you are rise to your feet rise to your feet say in the name of jesus christ let the fire of the spirit erupt in my spirit oh come on come on you are not praying say let the fire of the spirit erupt in my soul let the fire of the spirit erupt in my heart let the fire of the spirit erupt in my mind lord restore me to sobriety bring me to being sober bring me to being vigilant bring me to being heightened in my spiritual sensitivity say father in the name of jesus i come alive in the fire and i'm not weak <laughs> say i come alive in the fire and i'm not small i come alive in the fire i am not susceptible to the operating hands of satan say i come alive in the fire and i'm not vulnerable to the antics of satan and i'm not ignorant of the devices of the devil the adversary come on you are not speaking you are not praying say you adversary you no longer harm me because i am raised to life in christ and seated with him in the heavenly places far above principalities and power sir as a child of god you are operating in realms higher than that of the principalities and power you are operating in realms rise to your place in christ say i am raised and seated with christ at the right hand of the father in the heavenly far above principalities far above powers far above authorities far above the army of wickedness in the heavenly places so there is the heavenly places of the wicked spirit there is the heavenly places of the dwelling of believers the, uh, the operational center of believers glory to god in the name of jesus christ raise your right hand say in the name of jesus i am free from the wasting hands of the host of darkness in the heavenly places say i take my place in christ at the right hand of the father far above principalities far above powers far above names that can be named not only in this age but in the age to come shall fire be seated you see the cure to it all is that you have to rise to your place in Christ. So when we talk about we are fighting with spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. I want to tell you there are levels of heavenly places. There is the heaven of God. And there is the heaven of demons. There is the heaven of, of elements. Like we talk about the heaven of rain. Rain comes from heaven in the sense of the height. There is the heaven of demonic activities. That's what the scripture is talking about. In the heavenly places. In high spiritual places. And make no mistake of thinking that the heavens of demons can be, you know, uh, parallel in the sense of physical way. With the heavens of the rain. Where rains and elements come from. That's not it. But we are talking about issues of what is higher. So the heavens of the demon. The scripture talks about the heavenly places where believers are seated. Above 
far above, far above the heavenly places of the principalities and the power. And the devil knows that, that once you walk in your elements as a child of God, that once you are born again, you come into life in Christ and grow, that you have gone beyond the meat. You are not the meat. You are not in the same heavenly places with Satan and the satanic forces. You are in the heavenly places of the divine, where you are seated in Christ and with Christ and through Christ far above we don't know how far as far as christ is above the principalities and power that's how far above you are and that is why the devil hates your prayer fire the devil hates you operating in the world the devil hates you operating in consecration the devil loves you fornicating and adulterating the devil loves you being dishonest and hateful the devil loves the envy and the jealousy in your spirit the devil loves the, loves the carnality and the irresponsibility the indisciplined life without vigilance without being sober why that is how you descend that is the ladder with which you descend below the principality below below the heavenly places of the principality and power and the things they are you are above begins to sit upon your head oh, come on come on come on they begin to sit upon your finance they begin to sit upon your your family upon your marriage and you want to marry and somebody suddenly does not know does not even know your name does not know why you should pick your call or why she should talk to you or what because you are dealing with controlling for say yeah if you get to this point and marry this person your destiny in god will be as god can i tell you something everyone you marry gives you a destiny so if you marry a wrong person you'll get a corresponding destiny and the devil fights against you getting it right. The devil fights against you paying the price to get it right. Why? He does not want you to operate in the heavens above the heavenly places of the satanic powers. But by the grace of God, this is why God sent us. That we will reveal this mystery to you. That you will love the fire of the presence. That you will love paying the price of consecration. Because if you don't pay the price of consecration... You will pay the price of being wasted and diminished and made insignificant and inconsequential. You will pay the price of rotting away. You will pay the price of wasting away. You will pay the price of living a life that is ruined. So be sober. Be vigilant. Why? Your adversary, the devil, that we see in Ephesians chapter 6, in his hierarchy and formation and arrangement and disciplined, well-organized well organized and well-motivated force that knows nothing other than destruction, that knows nothing other than corruption, that knows nothing other than reduction, that knows nothing other than scattering, that what is gathered is scatters, what is lifted, it brings down, what is pure, it makes dirty, what is mighty, it makes insignificant and weak. That is in the world. The enemy, the ad, your adversary, the devil, is not walking away from you. He's walking about you. He is parapetuating you. He is walking. He is treading around. He is walking around. He is jogging around. He is running. Whatever he does, is not far away. It is within the vicinity. Wherever you go, you travel to Russia, it's still orbiting you. I'm talking about orbiting you. Like the moon orbiting the sun. Um, the earth orbiting or the moon orbiting the earth and the earth orbiting the sun is you are in the center but it's walking around to see how it takes advantage of your indisciplined life how it takes advantage of your impure life oh what a gift you have given to the devil you who woke up from the bed of fornication last night and tonight you are saying praise the lord and you have an appointment of immorality this evening and you are also praying against principalities and power against the devourer no you are already devoured <laughs> you are in the basement of the devourer it begins with coming back to your place in the heavenly places in christ jesus that is where you have authority to say get out and it gets out otherwise uh, like the sons of skifa who will say i cast you out uh, he said well i know about this name jesus i know about paul because he dwells in the heavenly places above our heavenly places the problem we have that we don't know we are level of oppression ask somebody what's your level of oppression I want to tell you something. Many people come to church and also pray like others. And they go back. He said, I went back from that church and I was attacked. You were attacked because you insulted some principal spirits. 
I've heard things that I came to Grace Family. And as I went back, I was so attacked. I have never been attacked like that. Because you pray prayer, you are not qualified to pray. You touch things that you have not yet been equipped to touch. I don't know what I'm communicating. <laughs> Sir, God didn't ask us to build a normal place. God asked us to set up a place of fire where will people will first of all come into Christ before they understand the mystery of the operation. You don't touch what you don't have qualification to touch without receiving a knock that keeps your head heavy for a long time. And you say, I, I was so attacked, I don't understand why I should go to church. After such a strong prayer, I went back attacked because you dared to speak in voice that was not your voice. A voice, you use a name that you are not qualified to use. And you speak like others. When you say people pray, and they pray like this, and you also pray like this, they pray like this. It's not about the style of mimicking how people pray. It's not about your voice that is heard. It's about the echo of your spiritual voice in the heavenly places that announces to devour us far away. You dare not cross lines. And they pay attention because they look up and they know the one who speaks sits in the one and through the one and in the one who is above principalities and power. Rise to your feet. Shout Jesus. Shout the name again, Jesus. Come on, come on. Shout that name louder again, Jesus. Just keep shouting, Jesus. With your hands lifted up. Just keep shouting that name, Jesus. 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 Say in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Just shout that name some more. Just shout that name some louder more. Just shout that name intentionally more. Glory to God. Hallelujah. To the one who reigns. The one who is the governor of principalities and power. The one who is the governor of the truth. The one that is the governor of the host of wickedness. The one that is above what is above. The one that is higher than what is higher. The one that is greater than what is greater. The one that is stronger than what is stronger. Shout one more time, Jesus. Be seated, be seated. Glory to God. It's just to let you know that the Father did not make us to operate in the level of demons. He made us to operate in his own level. That is why he gave us a name. For this reason, the Father raised him up. He raised him up unto everyone that will believe in him. For as many that will believe in him, those who accept him and believe in him, he will give them right. Right to dwell with him in the heavenly places. Far above the heavenly places of demons, of the adversary. The Father did not give us a name like other names. The scripture says, for this reason, the, the father raised him up and gave him a name that is above every name, sir. The name I have heard of which is riding with, on a broomstick. Sir, the name of Jesus sir, is a strong tower, not a broomstick. So it does not, you don't ride at the level of witches and magicians who just ride on a broomstick and some walking stick and stuff. Sir, you are riding on a mighty tower. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower that the righteous enter their end and they are preserved, they are saved. So the Father gives us a stronghold, makes you a fortification. He said, Jeremiah, I have made you a fortification. So the, the father does not just fortify us. The father makes us a fortification. That means we become a system of preservation and protection. People, I have heard people say, oh, uh, um, since I came to this house, I can pray. I'm able to sleep. Why? Somebody has come not into a physical house, has come into a structure, a fortification of God on earth. That is the arrangement. The day I had my first child, by the grace of God, in the hospital, I had vigil in that hospital. And I don't joke when my child is coming forth. So I, I resume with them. The first lady taking, you know, taking in. It's, oh, we're preparing you through the night and all of that. I say, okay, fine. Praise God. So we also resume and take the calm of God into the hospital. Later on, a nurse had to come 
who later came to Grace Family. I'm not sure she's still in the country now. She confessed something that she could not understand. It was when she didn't know who the man, that, uh, whose wife she was attending to, who the man was. And we are from the same community. They are from the same community, not born and brought up in my community. In the way, but the father is from my community and she's been hearing about me. But she said something. She knew something unusual was happening in the hospital. Because when it was time for a prayer, the ease with which she prayed, the flow of the prayer, the joy of the prayer was like no other thing. That at night she battled all sorts of things to be able to pray. But this night, uh, there was this open heaven. Why? Headquarters had moved into the hospital. Headquarters had moved into the hospital. The fortification of divinity had moved in. That means in the like five miles radius or ten miles radius. I don't know if I'm talking to. Uh, we are setting a perimeter and a periphery that is large enough to accommodate. Sir. That is how people touch people's life. That you don't need to be in the in, you know you know to sit down and say I'm sitting in your church. The very fact that somebody moves into your street, fortification has moved in the street. So Suddenly, they say robbers no longer come here. And you don't understand why. Because God has sent a fortification. A fortification on earth is not Holy Ghost fire. It's one who carries Holy Ghost fire. A fortification on earth is not the blood of Jesus. It's one who carries the blood of Jesus. I don't know where I'm communicating. God looks for somebody who will carry the administration of his salvation. Who will be the embodiment of the finished work of the cross. And when he moves into a place, demons have a rebuke. Do not touch my anointed. And to my prophet, do not. Stand up and shout Jesus again. Just stand up and shout Jesus again. Just stand up and shout Jesus. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Just shout louder. Just shout louder. Just shout louder. Just shout louder. Shout louder. Shout louder. Shout louder. Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Speak in the Holy Ghost. Just take some time and speak. Say, I ascend in Christ. I submit my life in Christ. I receive forgiveness in Christ. I receive life in Christ. I receive mercy in Christ. I ascend to my height. Far above principalities and power. I ascend to my height. Far above powers of destruction. Far above delay. Far above the operational grounds of the devourer. Say, I ascend to my true heights in God. Say, I ascend. Please, I don't know how you guys do it. I think the setups Ruach. You have to look for Phil Thompson. Jesus, just just go, just go. Look, see how you begin to prepare that song. Because on a day like this, it's just about roaring that song, roaring Jesus, just roaring Jesus, just roaring Jesus, just roaring Jesus. Be seated, be seated. Sir, God did not make us meat of devourers. So when God says, everyone that devours you shall be devoured, God is angry. He said, I will contend with what contends against you. This is the language of redemption. It's not the language of creation. The language of creation is that you are far above. The language of redemption is since you had fallen from your place. How we go do, we have to rehabilitate you. So it's because of you, I now have to fight. And the point is this, if God fights for you and brings you up, but you are not ready to rise and stay in the heavenly places, let me tell you how your life will be. Your life is a roller coaster in life. Today up, tomorrow useless. Tomorrow, next tomorrow powerful, the other, other day deflated and so you become a disappointment you become unreliable heaven cannot build any structure or superstructure or substructure of salvation over you and upon you or using you why you are unstable as water and you shall no longer excel so when god fights for you this season you have to fight to stay in the heavenly places far above principalities and power you have to fight against the seduction of the flesh and the life of indiscipline and spiritual unproductivity that makes you an easy prey to the devouring hands of the devourer. I pray for you in the name of Jesus.
that the spirit calls strength from God will come upon you. The scripture talks about in Revelation chapter 4. Reading from verse 4 down talks about the seven spirits around his throne. The seven spirits around his throne. The scripture talks about the Holy Ghost and the scripture also talks about the seven spirits. And if you read that scripture, the seven spirits, the seven, the word spirit is capital or uppercase S. The seven spirits of it, from his throne. The seven spirits from his throne. I don't know. And from the throne proceeded lightning, thunderings, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven what? Which are the seven spirits. But that's not all. In, I think it should be in Revelation chapter 1. It's a, and that talks about greetings. That talks about, let me see, Revelation chapter 1. And from verse 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Just uh, the Revelation, go, go to verse 3. Go to verse 3. Come on, let's do some more. Blessed, uh, keep those. Let, go to verse 5. Go to verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Next, next verse, verse 6. Come on. Come on. And has made us kings and priests to our God and Father to be glow. Next verse. Come on. Give me next. Behold, he's coming. I'm looking for another place. Seven spirits. Sorry. Be seated. Let me search my scripture. And bring forth. I want to make an explanation about seven spirits. When we talk about, so when I say let strength, let the spirit cause strength come to you. I want you to understand the operation in the mystery of the spirit that we say the Holy Spirit as one. And, and, the, and we talk about the, the Holy Spirit as the seven spirits. The seven spirits. A seven spirits. Seven spirits. Seven spirits. In Revelation, glory to God. A seven spirit. And from the seven spirit, glory to God. Revelation chapter 1 verse 4. We actually missed it in verse 4. Revelation chapter 1 verse 4. To the seven churches we are, which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from he, from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from what? Seven spirits. Which are, with these seven spirits, where are they? Who are before his throne. So when you come to the throne of God in prayer, there everything you need walks through this seven spirit. So strength is a spirit. So there is an instruction that the one who is strength, that's why the scripture talks about is the one who is the strength, who is the spirit of justice upon him who is in judgment and strength unto him who turns away what? Battle at the gate. So strength is a spirit. Wisdom is a spirit. Counsel is a spirit. Knowledge is a spirit. So in a season like this, as I speak to you, I minister the spirit called strength. Say, I receive. I minister the spirit called discernment. Say, I receive. I minister to you the spirit called knowledge. Say, I receive. I minister to you the spirit called stability. Say, I receive. And without the spirit, the government of the seven spirits of God. When we use the word number seven, please, in the scripture, don't make a mistake of thinking it is literally, numerically, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The word spirit seven here refers to the fullness. The totality of the spirit. In every area of God's economy and government, there is the spirit of God. There is the oppression of the spirit of God coming to you. The day you are discouraged, there is a spirit called encouragement. It is people who have accessed the throne of God and under the economy and the management of the seven spirits that are standing before the throne. You see, when we pray, we are interfacing with the throne. When we come into the presence like this, we are interfacing with the throne. And the scripture talks about the seven spirits that are before, before, before. So as you come near, you are interacting with the throne via the seven spirit. That means the fullness of the spirit of God by which he governs the earth. Glory to God. Am I talking to somebody? That is why he gives strength to the weary. He gives so to those without strength. Give me Isaiah chapter 40. We have looked at it the other time. Can I see verse 28 to 29 and 20 and 30? Come on, come on. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints, nor is he weary, nor is weary. 
His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power. Labo shatatata. Power is spirit. Mende, the spirit of power. Le makata. And to those who have no might, what does it do? The spirit that increases strength. So strength is spirit. Next verse. Next verse. Come on. Come on. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. What happens? But those who wait on the Lord. What does it mean wait to, to wait on the Lord? Those who interface with the throne. They are governed and helped by the administration of the fullness of the spirit. That means in the totality of the faces of life, at any time as a single, at any time as a married person, at any time in a labor room, there is a spirit of God that is coming to administer to you. That's why just because you said you will never be an orphan. You will not be an orphan. And because there are seven spirits, so all the gifts mentioned in the New Testament, they don't capture the totality of the administration of the Spirit on earth. So the word seven is metaphorical. It's symbolic of completeness. It means as long as there are seven days in a week, you will find help from the Spirit in every situation, every day. It is complete and total. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> that is why I don't need to have the gift of prophecy to be your minister. As long as I interface the throne, there are seven spirits that govern the oh, government, the gov that govern the operation of God on earth. That means I don't, need, I don't need to be a prophet known in order to prophesy. I don't need to be a seer known in order to see. Why? I am interfacing and being used by the throne through the seven spirits. It means I'm expected to minister to you in all things. That is why many of you, you come and sit down here. You don't meet me. But after listening to me for 30 minutes, I've done counseling with you. You have heard what you needed to hear. I don't know what I'm communicating. Because I am ministering in the administration, in the economy of the servant spirit. So these are people who are qualified to stand against the adversary. Those who have interface with the throne. Those who have connection with the throne. Those who have affinity with the throne. Those who have relationship through Jesus Christ, the Son, with the throne. They are the ones helped in every area that can resist and stand against the adversary. Because this adversary is not a peak that you see in a, a dream. It's not a snake that you say, I killed in a dream. We are dealing with principalities and we are dealing with power. So, the recommendation, we've been talking about resisting. The only recommendation the scripture has given to us as paramount, after talking about being sober and vigilant, how are you going to deal with a devourer? Because he's walking about, you must engage. You must deal with it. Verse 9 of 1 Peter chapter 5 gives us a word that we have been talking about. He said, resist him. You are going to resist him. What does it mean to resist him? We looked up the Greek word. Resisting. It means to stand against. It means to oppose. It means to withstand. Say withstand. Stand up and say I withstand. Now when you say I withstand. You are dealing with things operating in the heavenly places. So your standing is not a physical standing here. Your standing is righteous standing before God. Standing in holiness. Standing in consecration. Standing in purity. Standing in the fire of anointing. Standing in the strength of the spirit. So we don't stand against the devil by saying, I stood in prayer for five hours. Sir. That is not the standing we are talking about. We are talking about the standing in the spirit because we are dealing with spiritual reality. Say, I stand. I stand. And I will stand. I stand. In, by the spirit of God. Lift up your right hand and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, by the administration of your seven spirits, enabling me to stand, I withstand the adversary. I resist the adversary. I break the might of the adversary. And I cause it to happen that the one who devours me is devoured. That my adversary eats his flesh and drinks his blood. Because you contend with him that contends against me. Glory to God. Be seated. Glory to God. Okay, so the basic requirement. What is the number one requirement for you to stand? Since this standing, you are not standing against your classmate. Since this standing, you are not standing against flesh and blood. Ephesians chapter 6, we have looked at it. That we are standing against that recommendation to stand 
Number one, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 and 11. Finally, after you've done with everything, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That is how you stand. Strengthened with all power and with all might. Strengthened with all power and with all might. You see, my brethren, be strong. Be strong not in your smartphone. Be strong not in your boyfriend or girlfriend, not in your husband or wife. Be strong not in your father or godfather. Be strong not in your association, your father in the Lord. Be strong. Not in your father in the Lord, not in your mama in the Lord, not in the prophet of your life. Be strong in the Lord. That means you have to engage the throne. You have to come directly under the administration of the seven spirit. Standing before the throne of, the throne of God. Be strong. And in the power of his might. Next verse. Put on the whole armor. Not some. The scripture talks about seven spirit. So the seven spirit will walk with you through the whole armor. You cannot walk with partial armor and, and resist successfully the devourer. Let me tell you about the partial, partial armor. You have midnight prayer. So you, you pray all the time. You pray all the time. But you are living with somebody who is not your husband. And you are saying, we are hoping you will marry me. It's just that things are hard with him, but we are praying together. We do midnight prayer together. We fornicate before we do the midnight prayer, and we resume after midnight prayer. Absolutely. So it's partial, partial amount. It's not respected in the heavenly places. And the enemy is not against you having some ammo. The enemy is terrified when you take a step to clothing yourself with the whole armor and leaving no room for the flesh. Leaving no room for the devil to take advantage of. That is where you cause a stare in heaven. If three demons used to mark you, headquarters will say seven, send seven more wicked spirits to mark when Messi and Ronaldo, Ronaldo is no longer fast. Portugal is, is playing, but he's not scoring right now. But leave the young man, leave the man alone. He has paid his price. He has made a mark in football. But when he plays, when Messi plays, when Pape, who is rising now, is playing, it's not just one person that marks somebody. There's a deployment of everyone that is serious. Those who break people's legs. The coach will say, oh yeah, go that way. Ma, have you, let, let me, come, come. Hold microphone for me. You see, I've not done coaching, but I know the language of coaching. When Messi or those guys say, like, like, Diana, yeah, Diana, like, Diana, yeah, Diana, you know, let me stay close. Am I communicating? One, two, three, four. That means stay close. So the day you come into the administration of seven ammo, if there were just one demon that could supervise you to keep you in weakness, the principalities and power will do quick, 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 quick. Means mark. That's why every time you try to rise in prayer, in prayer you provoke the wrath of wickedness. Why? You are a terror when you walk in the, serve, in the fullness of ammo. The fullness of armor means you access the seven help of the seven spirit. That means you become invincible, impregnable, and unstoppable. And so the enemy, somebody who was not talking to you before, somebody who was no longer in your lane before, suddenly begins to come back to your lane to bring back weakness. Why? You are becoming more dangerous. The kind of things you were not exposed to before. The kind of desires you did not have. The kind of ambition and exposure you did not have. Suddenly they spring up. Why? There are things coming from the east, west, north, and south. Suddenly you begin to have some connections and affiliations of weakness that you did not have. Why? You, have now, you are graduating into operating in the, self, in the fullness of armor. Which means you are about accessing the completeness of help from the seven spirit from the throne. 
throne. It means it's going to make you a principality over principalities and power. It's going to make you a territorial commander and a guardian. It's going to make you a, the stronghold manifestation of the name of Jesus, a stronghold. The name of the Lord is a mighty tower, but somebody has to bear the name of the Lord. I don't know where I'm communicating. Now, this is to reveal to you the mystery of the administration of wickedness in weakness. So if you wake up in the morning and you don't feel like praying, this is the reason. If any time you want to study the Bible, you sleep, this is the reason. If fasting is an abomination, this is the reason. If we're talking about rising during prayer belts to join yourself to the might of others in the family, to operate in the corporate grace to advance, and it makes you look like, I don't know, is it, is it be until we pray like this that things will become better? This is the reason. The devil lies with all forms of life because the scripture says when he speaks lies, he's speaking his native tongues. Sir, the devil speaks in tongues and his tongue is lie. And he lies to you with all lies to make you comfortable without strength. That means if without strength, you cannot withstand him. And the scripture didn't say shoot him. We talked about a place, a time in, 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 um, in worry that, that the minister said, come with your gun, come with your gun, come with your gun. We are going to fire the devil. And pe people saw it spiritually, but there was a man who saw it. He brought his AK-47 in church and kept it by himself. So when they said, raise your hand and shoot the devil, the man raised the gun. And by the time he opened his eyes, he said, ah, drop your gun, drop your gun, drop your gun. So we are not talking about gun as physical one. So we are talking about spiritual might. Am I communicating? The devil does not respond respond to spiritual, to physical God. So he does not want you to operate in strength. He will give you a prophet, he will prophesy over you, but he will not allow you to speak in the level of being a prophet. He does not worry, giving you a mighty man who will watch over you and see every dream about you. When there ever, whenever attack is coming, somebody will see an attack. The devil is not troubled about that. What the devil is troubled about you being a, being a kind of person that attack cannot touch. That is what is at stake. But the only recommendation and the hope is that resist him. Resist him means stand up against him. It means oppose him. And you don't oppose him with mouth. You don't oppose him with flesh and blood. You oppose him with the mind of God. Finally, my brethren, Ephesians 6.10, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to do what? To be, may be able to do what? The word stand there, we stand. That means to resist. Because First Peter says, stand up to him. Resist him. So how will you resist him? The whole armor. That means you have to connect the throne in fasting, in prayer. Maybe next Sunday we'll talk about spiritual exercise. How to connect the throne. But today we are still doubling down on strength. Look at the Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 to 11. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 to 11. For this reason we also since the day we heard of it, we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. As I speak, strength is coming back to you. The virtue that had left you because of irresponsibility, be restored in your virtue. Be restored in your virtue. Be restored in your purity. Be restored in your virility. Be restored in your ability. Be restored in your impregnability. Be restored in your invincibility. Be restored in your sanity. Shout Jesus! Keep shouting Jesus! Be seated. We do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you may walk worthy of the Lord. And we are talking about here about filled with all wisdom and spiritual understanding. It takes spiritual wisdom and understanding for you to, to access what I'm talking about. Otherwise, it looks like like I'm just doing some some parable. 
some native nke and tails. Say, I receive spiritual wisdom. Receive the spirit called wisdom. I say, receive the spirit called wisdom. Receive the spirit called understanding. Come alive in wisdom. Say, I come alive in wisdom. I come alive in understanding. Say, I come alive in wisdom. I disentangle you from every useless relationship. I say, I disentangle you from every useless relationship. I pull you out from every place you are that keeps you small and weak. I say, I pull you out from any and every place you are that keeps you small. In the name of Jesus. Say, I come alive mighty in Christ Jesus. Say, I come alive wise in Christ Jesus. Say, I come alive with understanding. Say, I am no weak. Be seated in the name of Jesus. Verse 10. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. And verse 11. Strengthened with, strengthened with some might. Strengthened with many aspects of might. Strengthen with some sheets of might. Something strengthen with some spirits of might. That's not what the scripture, the scripture cannot break itself. When it says, put on the whole armor, it means you need the whole might, the whole power, the whole ability, the whole purity. The devil tells you you can have it partial, not, not fanatical. At least a little here and a little there. And the devil loves it. Half weak, half strong. The devil feasts on it. You cannot stand. Isaiah 7, 9. Except you stand by me, you will not stand at all. That was a word to the king. If you will not stand by me, you will not stand at all. Let, let's go back. Come on. Come on. Okay. If you look at that scripture, Isaiah 7, 9. It's one of the scriptures. I still remember the time I was going through spiritual warfare in the seminary. As far back as 1995. That this scripture, the Lord used it to speak to me. 1995. In the seminary. I still remember where I sat in a classroom. When the scripture broke out in my spirit. In that season of warfare. God was telling me, in my own version of the Bible, if you do not stand firm in your faith, my own version of the Bible then said, if you do not stand by me, you will not stand at all. So this is it. If you will not stand by God, complete, total, not partial, you will not stand at all. So God is not a God of a partial contact. It's total. Seven spirit, I told you, it's total. The whole armor of God. So look at that scripture. We are still talking about the mystery of resisting the devil. You cannot stand and preach in church and your marriage is in a mess at home. You cannot stand. You cannot stand and serve in church and you are wonderful, but your life is messy in secret. You cannot stand at all. You cannot stand in a public space and everybody knows you as an elder, as a deacon, as a born again, as this. But in your private life, you are, you are useless. You cannot stand again. And the devil wrecks havoc, sends all the, the, the specialized forces of darkness to say, mark him, mark him, mark him. Don't let him access. But you will access. Rise. I said today you will access your full strength. Say, I, say, I access my full strength. You are not speaking. Say, I access my full strength in Christ Jesus. Say, I access my full mind to resist the adversary. Come on, come on. Say, I access all of God's might, all of God's glory, all of God's wealth, for all of God's victory over my life. Say, I lose nothing. For it has been counted and none was lost. None was missing. Say, none is missing in my life. None is lost in my life. Not in my health. Not in my spirit. Not in my body. Not at home. Not in my children. Say, I stand strong with all might. 
Glory to God. Speak in the Holy Ghost for a couple of seconds. Libra, Libra, Sundata, Lita, no prelita, lift up a twine and speak in the Holy Ghost. Libra, Sotemala, don't mean they pray. Zomen de pra, Lazan de Keteando, Liba, Sopre, Masando, Temali, Breto, Lassem, Mende Pro, Lamazekete, Labresunda, Talamande, Kete, Brosato, Malatiando, Pre, La Boshi, Kata, Mande Pra, La Boshi, and Nanda la sondo to pre malakata le prosianda te pro lakata le makapala bosikete la ma se pre le bosata se a come alive in the full might uh, to resist uh, i come alive uh, in the full strength uh, to resist uh, i come alive uh, in the full power to resist uh, I come alive in the seven spirits to resist. I come alive in the seven anointing to resist. I come alive in the fullness of power, in the fullness of might, in the fullness of might, in the fullness of strength, in the fullness of dominion. Say, I resist the adversary. I resist spiritually. I resist financially. I resist physically. I resist emotionally. I resist in every ramification in my dream life in my fantasy in my imagination in my trance in my dreams say I resist shout Jesus be seated be seated it says strengthen with all might I pray in the name of Jesus that the Holy Ghost will give you a revelation and understanding of the operation of all might it is not an accident that the Holy Spirit had to take me to telling you about seven spirits Standing at his throne. Before his throne. That means you cannot engage his throne except through the administration of Jesus Christ in the servant spirit. He said the spirit will minister to you from my stock. He will take what is mine. So all of God's might available in Christ Jesus is brought in administration. So the Holy Ghost is the administrator of the resources of salvation in Christ for the kingdom of the father to be established so the holy ghost is the economy or the chief economy the cbn director so to say the minister of finance the whole deposit of a management of economy in the time of jonathan ngozi wela okonjo was the coordinating minister of economy de facto she was the president of this nation when it comes to economy So the Holy Ghost, that's why Jesus Christ said, anybody who sins against, the, who sins against the, the Son of Man will be forgiven. Who blasphemes against it? But anyone who blasphemes against the Spirit shall not. Because salvation in Christ can be, will only be administered by the Spirit. That's why you, the Scripture says they are before the throne, not behind. And they are seven, and you need seven for all minds. And I talk to you that seven here is not issue of no, it's not numerical. Seven, seven here is metaphorical, it's symbolic. It represents the totality of the administration of God's government unto his kingdom, his believers, his sons and daughters. So the scripture says, strengthened with all, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy I don't want to go into that but I'm talking about strengthening with all say all I'm praying that you have understanding say I receive understanding so strength of God is reliable in destroying the, de the devourer the seven spirit manifesting the totality of God's might and strength upon his children they are sufficient. That means one strengthened with the whole armor, strengthened with all might, helped by the seven spirit. The might of God in your life is sufficient. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 29. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 29. And also the strength of Israel will not lie, nor relent, for he is not a man that he should do what he should. So he is the strength of Israel. And Paul will talk to the Galatians and talk to us and say, We are the new Israel. The covenant people. His strength in Christ Jesus administered by the servant spirit will not fail. 
He will not lie to you. It means no matter the operation of, this, of the devourer, you operate in higher levels. Say higher levels. So the word of God, we have talked about how does God minister his strength? God ministers strength. We talked about naturally, strength comes through what you eat and exercise. Now, if you eat, all you do eat the best of food, but you don't stand up and walk. You don't accept yourself. You are a sinner. You, are, you live a sedentary life. You are inactive. You cannot be strong. I don't know where I'm talking to somebody. So strength, if you see anybody who is strong, is a combination of food and exercise. If you exercise without food, you come into exhaustion and you become weak. If you eat well but you don't exercise, you become inactive, weak, obeys. You cannot do anything. So instead of food helping you, food kills you. So it is exercise that makes food useful. And what is the food that God gives us for spiritual strength? We had mentioned that three weeks ago, the word of God, Jeremiah chapter 15. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. Your words were found. Another version I've been familiar with in the past told me, your words came to me and I devoured them and I ate them. So he's the one who eats the word who can destroy devourer. So God gives you strength by the food and the food of the world. And your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. First Peter chapter 2, from verse 1 and 2, verses 1 and 2, First Peter chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babies, desire the pure milk of the world, Desire the pure milk of the world that you may grow thereby. So you grow in strength by the milk of the world. And as you rise in the milk, you come to the place of the bone of the world. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 7. Ezekiel chapter 2, and verse 7. You shall speak my words to them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are rebellious. But you, son of man, Hear what I say to you. Hear what I say to you. Do not be rebellious like the rebellious house of, house of Israel. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. And verse 9. Now when I looked, there was a hand stretched out to me. And behold, a scroll of a book was in it. This is the word of God. Then he spread it before me and there was writing on the inside and on the outside. This is the word. And written on it were lamentations and mourning and woes. That means this is what will give him strength to speak anger of God upon the people of Israel for them to repent. Verse 1 of chapter 3. Verse 1 of chapter 3 said, Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, Eat what you find. Eat this crow. Sir, to have strength to resist the devourer, you have to eat this crow. Did you hear me? You have to eat this crow. You have to be comfortable eating this crow. Eating the word of God written inside and outside. That is where you find strength to turn away and just say these words are spirit and they are what? They are alive. As you eat the word and speak the word, the spirit comes alive. Seven spirits begin to walk in you. Oh, recently, when we were about entering the season of the spiritual warfare, God gave me in a revelation one scripture by two individuals. I was walking through a portal and somebody greeted me and mentioned that scripture. As I walked away, and as I was walking to a, a, in another revelation, after I woke up, I went into another revelation, and I was still passing through a portal. Somebody gave me that revelation, and that's what I've been praying with from that moment till now. Sir, the spirit walks through the world. The devil hates you paying attention to the world. When last did you invest in the world to listen? You buy everything, you have everything, but you don't invest in the world. 
it is your investment returns to you in strength. If you invest financially, the return will be financial strength. I don't know what I'm communicating. If you invest foolishly, the return will come to you as multiplied foolishness. If you invest in the word, the word will return to you with the spirits of strength. Glory to God. So God will give you scroll to devour. You must eat this scroll. Sir, God's response to Elijah's helplessness in the face of the devourer the devourer called Jezebel. Jezebel hunted him down. He said, oh, you've killed the prophets of Baal. I'm coming after you. Don't worry. You have to deal with me next. So the mighty man of God ran. In his weakness, God fed him first. Gave him food to eat. So when God wants you to stand against what has been standing against your ancestry and nobody ever came out, God is not interested in sending you to somebody who will see all the witches in your family but does not prepare you. God will send you to somebody who will make you eat the scroll and who will wake you up again like the angel. Let's, let's, look, at, let's look at that first king. Last first king, chapter 19 from verse 3. And when he saw that, and when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba which belongs to Judah and left his servant there. Verse 4. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die and said, It is enough now, Lord. Take my life for I am no better than my father's. See what God did. Then as he laid down and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel Every time you hear the word angel malak in Hebrew, angelos in Greek, it means messenger. So I stand here as God's angel over you. Everyone sent for God's purpose over you is called angel. Whether they are spiritual angel. The day God wants to send you financial help, he sends you a messenger that will bring finance. And the devil walks through evil angels, demons. Messengers who destroy health. Messengers who rob marriages of joy. And I will, what is the administration of the angel here? The angel did something. Can you read it with me? What did the angel do? Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, What? That's what I do every Sunday. Rise and arise and study. Arise and fast. Arise and pray. Arise and study the word. Arise and hear the word. Come back on Thursday to hear the word. When I ask you to be here on Thursday for the word, it's not for me to have companionship. I'm not a lonely man. I'm not a hopeless, desperate man. I'm not doing, you don't look at me as somebody who's doing this to have offering to eat. So I have one of the best brains that I know. I know there are many brains, but I know my brain is one of the best brains that I know. If I know 10 brains that are good, my brain is among them. So I'm not somebody who was designed to beg in life. It's an insult to everything God has wired me for. I'm not in ministry for anything I can get out of it. So I have been blessed for my generation. I need you here to study the word because like an angel, I'm tapping your eyes. And it's for the journey. The journey of recovery in your family. The journey of turning things around. The journey of ending the regime of the devourer. The journey of the emergence of the generation of the mighty is just about beginning. He tapped him and said, rise and eat. Rise and eat. Verse 6, then he looked and there by his head was a cake baked on coals. Do you know in John's gospel chapter 20 or so, is it 21, that Jesus Christ made bread and asked them, come and eat. Come and eat. Come and eat. So God is the God who feeds and, and the word of God says in Deuteronomy, he made you hunger in the desert and then gave you food to eat so that you will know that man shall not eat, live by bread alone, but by what? By every word. So the word of God is the bread of God. The word of God is the food of God. Is the meat of God. Is the milk of God. For the baby, the word of God is the milk. For the adult, the word of God is the, the bony meat. The word of God is the bread. Oh, the word of God is what gives bread. What gives, so the protein of God is in the word. Sir, 
The protein of God is in the world. The minerals of God in the world. Sir, what is it that you, carbohydrate of God in bread is in the world? Sir, they make of children, they give them iron, give them everything. Sir, carbohydrate is in, the, is, in, is in that milk for children. Sir, everything protein that they need is in that milk. Sir, everything that man needs to grow up is in the milk. And the word of God is the milk of God. That means at any level that you are, the word of God contains everything you need to stand against the devil at that level. Because when you grow up, you meet higher things. Uh, and you change from milk to meat and bone. And everything is in it, sir. Uh, and the devil puts systems in place to make the word of God ineffective. So that because you don't love the word of God, you don't invest in the word of God. When I prophesy in the word of God, it does not activate something in you. Because you are an alien to the world. But no longer so. Say, I'm no longer an alien. I am done here. He looked and there by his head was a cake baked on coals so by his bed. But he said he didn't need to travel far. The word of God is close to you. It's near you. That's what Moses said. It's near you. It's in your mouth to confess. So if you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart, Sir, you will be saved. So the word is near you. You don't need to travel to Ukraine for the word. You don't need to travel to Austria for the word. It's by the head. The food for your life. Sir, wherever you turn to, there are teachers. There are teachers that God has appointed over you. If you can only descend, you don't need to struggle to hear them. You don't need to travel far to hear them. The word comes in season. As I'm talking to you, is the word you needed to hear today. I am speaking to you what you needed to hear today. To activate what needed to be activated in your life today. In order to destroy the devourers that are operating today. Remember, they are walking around. Next verse. And the angel came back. After he ate it, the angel came back to, this, to him the second time and touched him and said, Arise and do what again? Come on, read it with me. Arise and do what? Why? 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 Rise to your feet. Why? Why? Shout it out. Why do you need to eat on Thursday? Why do you need to study in the morning? Why do you need to eat in the evening? Why do you need to eat every day? Why do you need to eat in January and eat in December? Why? Because the journey. Many of you, you have not gone to anywhere because you don't have the strength to start the journey. You don't have what it takes. Verse 8. So he arose. He ate and drank. And what happened? And what happened? Come on, what happened? Read it for me. And he went in what? In the strength of that food. 40 days and 40 nights. As far as Horeb. The mountain of God. The throne of God. Where he received help from the seven spirits. Where he received instruction for the next generation. Where he was told there is a man that would take over from you. And God knew there would be a man who would be hungry enough to look for double portion. Oh, glory to God. I pray in the name of Jesus that hunger will come upon you. Yeah. Hunger will come upon you. Yeah. Lift up your two hands. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. I submit to the administration of your salvation. Speak it like you mean it. Say, I give up sin. I give up any and everything the devil uses against me. I give up weakness. I give up the life of indiscipline. I give up the life without sobriety. I give up the life without vigilance. I give up the life of weakness. I give up the life of distraction. Mention what you give up personally. I give up this immoral relationship. I give up this impure relationship. I give up attachment to useless things and places. As you say, I give up, I take them from you. I take immorality from you. I take weakness from you. I 
take discouragement from you. I take distraction from you. I take adultery from you. I take fornication from you. I take loss from you. Keep giving up something. Everything you give up, I take from you. I take sickness from you. I take depression from you. I take spiritual laziness from you. I take from you everything God did not give you. I restore to you strength. I restore to you might. I restore to you purity. I restore to you holiness. I restore to you power. I restore to you glory. I restore to you blessing. I restore to you joy. I restore to you light. I restore to you vibrancy. I restore to you vibrancy. I restore to you revival. I restore to you vision. I restore to you sight. I restore to you utterances. I restore to you prosperity. I restore to you ability. I restore to you. I restore to you vibrancy. I restore to you impregnability. I restore to you unstoppability. I restore to you ability. I restore to you purity. I restore to you spiritual integrity. I restore to you spiritual dignity. I restore to you ability in God. I restore to you holiness. I restore the spirit of holiness. Let the spirit of holiness come back to you. Let the spirit of purity come back to you. Let the spirit of might come back to you. Raise your right hand. Say in the name of Jesus. I come alive in all the might of God. Say in the name of Jesus Christ. I come alive strengthened with all might. Uh, according to the glorious power of God. Say I come against you the devourer. What devours me? You are devoured by the fire of God. What devours me? It's your flesh and drink your blood. What devours me? It's your flesh and drink your blood. What devours me? I devour you. What devours me? By the word of God. And my words not like hammer and fire. By the word of God. I shatter the head of the devourer. And by the fire of the world. I devour the devourer. I devour the devourer. I devour the devourer. As you speak, lay your hands where you need the miraculous healing of God. In the name of Jesus, let healing come to your bone. I take cancer from you. I take ulcer from you. I take tumor from you. I take diabetes from you. I take kidney failure from you. I take whatever that weighs from you. I break the hand of the devourer in your health. Your money will no longer go down for drugs. Every one of you depending on drugs. I take that power from you. You live by bread of God. You live by the word of God. Man shall not live by drugs alone. But by every word. I restore the word to you. As your livelihood. I restore to you. The word of God as your protein. The word of God as your minerals. The word of God as your vitamin. The word of God unto you. As your carbohydrate. The word of God to you. As pure milk. The word of God to you as the meat of God. You come alive. Say I come alive in the mouth. Say I cannot go down. Whatever wants to take me down. I take you down. I take you down. I take you down. I take you down. Speak it out. Lord, you are the fine word. The fine word. Keep speaking. Take down what wants to take you in my life. And God, your word is settled. <laughs> is settled forever. You are infinite. <laughs> You are the ultimate. I trust you. Lord, we trust you. You are infinite. You are the ultimate. I trust you. Rise to your strength. Rise to your power. Rise to your ability. 
rise into prayer you can pray 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 you can devour the devourer you can take down what takes down you can destroy what destroys you can break down what breaks down you can destroy what destroys you can devour what devour by the word by the word i trust you i trust you you are infinite you're the ultimate see Lord I trust you I trust you glory in the name of Jesus Christ your hand on any part of your body Father in the name of Jesus feel everyone here with your spirit Be filled with the spirit of holiness. Be filled with the spirit of righteousness. Be filled with the spirit of power. Be filled with the strength to resist the devourer. Be filled with the spirit of health. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of knowledge and prosperity. In the name of Jesus Christ. Clap those hands like God has blessed you. Come on, clap and shout the name that is above all. Clap and shout the name that is above all names. Glory to God. Be seated. Pastor, permit me to do offering. Pastor, permit me. Pastor Biko, permit me to do offering. Thank you so very much. Let's give to disgrace the devourer. You see, the devourer of your finance fears your financial sacrifice. When I mean devourer of finance, the one who brings stagnation, no opportunity, you keep begging and struggling on the same level, the same old level. He hates your sacrifice because financial sacrifice in honoring God is the most powerful system of overcoming financial devourers. The scripture talking about God de rebuking devourers from your stock and it's in association with tithe. So your giving is tribute unto God. And by that tribute, you empower the one. Tributes are given to kings, those above. And when tributes are given to kings, kings use their kingly power to protect those who give them tribute. So your tithe is not tax. It's not law. It's the administration of honor. It's the administration of recognizing God as the king over you and your resources, your offering, your seed. The prophet's gift is just the word of God. Believe in God, you shall be established. Believe also in his prophet. Whoever gives this prophet the cup of holy water because he's this and that and that, he shall not lack a reward. There is a reward that are rewards that I carry by my administration because I carry and wear the the administrative headquarters of God concerning you. And there are things God has put that it is only in honoring and recognizing the administration of this call that certain things can be provoked. There are certain things God has put in the hands of the prophet. Elisha had to be the one to activate a son in the house of the Shunammites. These are things that cannot be broken. These are things that cannot be broken. When God wanted to do something in the house of Cornelius, he sent, he said, go to meet Peter. He didn't mention Jesus. And then he just said, look for Peter. He carries what will change your life. And when Peter came, baptism of the Holy Ghost fell before the baptism of water. God does not joke with his instrument. And thanksgiving it's just an administration of gratitude. It doesn't have to be people calling your name and you registering. That one can come, coming with friends and all of that. But Thanksgiving is a spontaneous administration in response to what God has done in gratitude. In gratitude, your tithe, your offering, and partnership. In July, we have a big partnership drive to pay our bills the second half of the year next month. So we need partners, whether it is one-off partnership, one-off partnership. 
one-off partnership of dropping a seat or being a stable partner, pick up form for partnership on the first day of July and meet with all partners. And it is by 6 a.m. to 7.30. It's going to be on a Monday. So corresponding envelopes given to you or online transfer rise to your feet. Say with me, Father, in the name of Jesus. I give as honor. I give with understanding. I give as a privilege. I give also giving away everything of the devourer in my life. By this giving, I honor you. And your word says, those who honor me, I will honor them. By this honor, I provoke what will honor my life. And by this giving, I give out the last work of the devourer in my life. Say, I abound with all blessing, all things pertaining to life and godliness. They come to me according to your word in Jesus' name. Stretch your, those hands and they give towards me. By this gift, as you drop this gift, you are dropping sickness. Anything that the devourer has been using to keep you stagnant, keep you slow, keep you without speed, keep you small, you are dropping them. Amen. And your return is might. Amen. Prosper. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Be seated.